you form a physical circle for me, if you could? Mm -hmm. Now, what I want to demonstrate to you is how the neurons in a baby's brain f f wire themselves up. At birth, humans are remarkable. We have 100 billion cells in our brain. Now, they're starting to wire up already in utero. So they're listening to the languages that you speak in your house. They will recognise your voices when they are born. If your babies are lucky enough to be being born into a bilingual household, which is great for brain development and also for um, well-being and connection to heritage, it's really important to keep up. But they will recognise both languages. We are One of my favourite things about humans is, did you know that at birth, assuming there's no hearing impairment, we are all proper global citizens? Do you know what I mean by that? We can hear any language, any sound from any language on the planet, and we can make any sound from any language on the planet. So at birth, we can fit into any tribe. Isn't that just ace? By 10 months, we've lost some of the more extreme ability to differentiate, some of the, the more subtle sound differences. But at birth, so before birth, they are tuning into languages, they're looking at mum's stress levels in pregnancy and just checking. Um, and there's all sorts of motor skills. As I said, we see babies grasp and touch their face. So there's pathways for motor skills. But the majority of it takes place after birth because a human could be born into a rainforest, a savanna. They could be born into war, peace, plenty, famine. And what they need to fit into their tribe is a bit different. So after birth, the fourth trimester, and in fact the first year, you build the architecture of a baby's brain. So what happens is these neurons fire out electrical impulses. And where they connect, they start to form synaptic connections. Neurons that fire together, wire together, and they build these pathways across the brain. So to begin with, everything is being wired, and it's all about experience. 700 connections are made a second. So we're going to imagine that our red wall represents a less positive connection, a less positive interaction. And our cream wall represents a good one, like love or security or language or something good like that. Now, if we're just trying to find the end of one of these, um, I'll find the edge on the other one, just see if we can find it somewhere. I'll just do that and drop it down. Can I get, get you to hold both of those? So that's our start point. And what you're going to do, and it's very easy, we're getting rid of that, hold the end and hold the end of both of them. Okay. So my baby's crying. And my baby's developing brain is currently flooded with stress hormones. And babies can't regulate their own temperature, now my mother, uh, their own emotions. Now, my mother may have said that if you pick that baby up every time that baby cries, mm -hmm. you'll ruin that baby. But I know that's not true. I know that the baby needs help managing their emotions in the early days. So my job shh, 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 is to comfort the baby, is to help the baby manage its feelings. So I'm going to say, all right, what happened? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Dear, dear. Now, think about this baby now. What kind of pathways might be forming in this baby's brain? Positive. Talk to me. Positive. So give me an example. What sort of ones? Comforting. Would... Comfort. So, oh, two beautiful ones there. Mm -hmm. So comfort. So I'm actually, hold on to your end, I'm actually showing this baby how to soothe itself, aren't I? Comfort. And the other one you said was love. Love, love is one of my favourites. It's so important for babies that they feel love. I've always said that you can tell a baby who's been smiled at from the day they were born. Because you pick them up and they smile at you. They know, but, and it's their sense of self-esteem. I'm all right. She smiles at me every time she looks at me. Yeah? So there's love. Love's a beautiful one. So go there and keep holding on to it. What else is this baby getting? Safety. Oh. Safety. Oh, security's huge. And it's a really massive one. So you hold on to a bit and then pass the other the roll back. Does that make sense? So keep hold. Pass the roll over here, if you would. So security is really, really important. Because the priority for the baby is to stay safe. So if, you, if the grown-ups come regularly and comfort the baby regularly, it's going to use its energy to explore and learn and be interested. If this baby thinks that nobody's going to come, it's going to devote its energy to making sure the grown-up comes to keep them safe because it knows it can't survive on its own. So that goes back. So security is really important. So it's getting a lot. What else is it getting? So keep going. Join that back up to security. There. Which one was security? It doesn't matter. So call this one security. Another one. What else is the baby getting? It's all right. It's all right. We've had comfort. Yeah, what Reassurance. else? Reassurance. Lovely. So send the cream over again. What else am I doing? It's all right. It's all right. Communication. Language. Remember, you can't learn to speak if people don't speak to you. So they really need this constant flow of meaningful words. You can't just read auto-trained to them. Do you know what I mean? It's actually got to be what you can see and what's going on. But language. 
So I use a lot of words. I'm very, very vocal, as you might have noticed. So there's lots of words going on. Any more? And physicalness. There's lots of lovely physical touch. Remember, the first language of babies is touch. So can we send it over there? So 700 connections are made a second in the baby's brain. So can you imagine this whizzing and whizzing and whizzing? Now, where pathways are used a lot, the brain protects them. It literally coats them in a, in a protective coating that turns them into super fast high-speed broadband kind of for transferring messages. Now, another day, this baby time, I'm um, just upstairs. I'm on my way down as fast as I can. But I haven't got there. Or maybe I'm answering the front door. Or I'm just, I'll be one minute. I'll be one minute. I've just got to turn the hob off or something. How's this baby feeling? What kind of pathways are going on? Distress. Distress. So the baby's feeling quite stressed right now, isn't it? So that's what we call a red pathway. Okay, what else is the baby feeling? A bit scared, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because don't forget, until the baby's six or nine months old, they don't know that they're not part of you. They don't realise they're a separate being. So if you're not there, that's really scary for them. It's not manipulative, it's just frightening. Any more? Abandoned. Abandoned, absolutely. Remember that whole thing about security? Now I'm going to stop there, I'm just going to get you to look at this. Look at this baby's primary architecture. Next time this baby cries, what will its primary architecture tell it? It's going to be okay, isn't it? Yeah. Actually, everything's going to be all right. Because there's more. There's more cream than there is red. Now imagine if this was reversed. Okay? More red. But actually, in, am I a perfect parent? Is it all cream? No, that's okay. You don't have to get it right all the time. There just has to be more cream mm -hmm. than there is red. That's really important. Now, around the age of three, the brain has a look back at everything. Because let's face it, in the very early days, it records every experience. So it kind of rates the cat as high as grandma. And then a little while later, it realizes the cat is not going to help it in any way, but grandma is a good bet. Do you know what I mean? She'll feed it, she'll love it, she'll talk to it. But in the early days, it just maps everything. So about the age of three, the brain goes round and does a prune. And the least used pathways are gone. And we know this because when children acquire, around the age of three, their vocabulary explodes. And they expect, the researchers expected to see a lot more of this protective coating going on around three. And it wasn't, it was just the same as it had been when they were one. So they used the pathways that they used in early life. So what you do in early life matters. Now I just need to stop everything here and say, some people have terrible starts, but humans are ace. We are a wonderful species. We are so fixable. We are so redeemable. Yeah. My example is always this. If you were to build a house straight onto ground with no foundations, the walls may crack. And you certainly couldn't put a lot of stories on that house safely. Yeah. If you build a house with deep foundations, you could literally build a skyscraper on there, couldn't you? And it would be a strong house. Now, a house with poor or no foundations, you can shore it up. You can go back, you can dig out, and you can put in foundations retrospectively. We are so fixable. But which is easier? To put in the foundations without a house on top, or to go back and fix them later? So when you pick them up, when you love them, when you talk to them, when you cover them, this is what you're doing. You, can't, you can spoil a three-year-old. You can spoil a two-year-old. You can't spoil a one, you know, up to one. They're not manipulative. You are literally building the pathway that they will use their entire life. What do you think? They're brilliant. Yeah. Isn't it quite something? And I love the fact that you don't have to be perfect. We've still got some red. You just need more cream. Sometimes if you have a baby who's really hard work, sometimes if it gets to the point where they haven't stopped crying, put them somewhere safe, go and stand in the garden. Do you know what I mean? It's okay. We, don't, we just don't need them in a stress state, but sometimes it's all right. But you know that you've got enough cream. And sometimes if you're trying to comfort them and they're not calming down, even if they're not calming down, the fact that you are trying is laying these beautiful layers of cream. It's not what we have. It's not about wealth. It's not about privilege. It's not about education. It's about responsiveness and love. And isn't that just beautiful? Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.